What do you imagine when you hear the word server? Hi, my name is Marsha, I'm the Coding Blonde, and welcome to my Blonde Dictionary, where I explain computer terminology using, as I call them, blonde examples. What do you imagine when you hear the word server? A mystical creature or a wardrobe size scary computer with lots of light bulbs and tons of switches. A server is actually a computer program, so a piece of software that is run on a device that doesn't have to be huge, but typically is. And there are different types of servers serving different purposes. And the most common ones are database servers that let you store and access data, email servers that accept, forward, deliver, and store your emails, file servers, which provide file storing services, web servers that store, process, and deliver web pages to clients or users, game servers that allow for multiple players to play the same game and experience the same game environment at the same time, print servers that let you print documents wirelessly, and application servers that let you create, store, and run your web applications on them. Multiple server programs can be run on one device, so it can be multitasking but a lot of the times they're dedicated to one function. By association or monotomy, 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 metonymy, or metonymy, a word that I've just learned, the devices themselves are also called servers. So your image of the huge wardrobe was not so wrong. So why don't we go back to imagining servers as metal boxes with lights and switches rather than something intangible like software. All right, so now we know that servers are devices with software performing certain actions and storing data. But how do we access or receive those services? And that is where client-server relationship comes in. You and I are clients in this situation and servers, well, are servers. Every time you're trying to access information that's stored in a server, you send a request as a client to a server that stores that information. And the server is just sitting there bored, looking at its watch and scrolling its Instagram feed. And once your request comes in, it's really happy to finally share, do something and share that information with you. Unless there are restrictions like password or something like that. A good example of that is opening a web page. For example, when you type in the address into your browser, let's say codingblonde.com, it converts it into its unique IP address, finds the right server where the information about this website is stored and sends it a request. The server sends back the information about this web page in form of a code that is encrypted according to the HTTPS protocol, which your browser then reads and converts it into pretty pictures and words. And on my page, I have the best words. A great example of this would be a library. You go into a library to find a certain book. You know the name of the book. So in our parallel, that's the website URL. The book name corresponds to a certain number in the system, just like IP address, using which you can find the shelf where it's stored the server. So now the book needs to get delivered to you, or at least let's assume for uh, the sake of this example, which is how the information that's stored on the server gets back to you. We can go a step further and compare your brain to a browser that converts text into knowledge, just like browsers convert code into pretty pictures and words. But let's save it for some other time. And my camera died. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that next time you open a website, you know what's happening behind the scenes. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel not to miss another Blonde Dictionary video. And if you have any suggestions or comments or ideas for me, please comment below. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.